With the re-release of the West German Forces for Flames of War World War 3, I thought that I would take this opportunity to show you how to paint a winter camouflage employed on West German vehicles, using a plastic modder and the Vallejo range of paints to do so. Before I began painting, I began by applying a primer so that the later layers of paint adhered to the miniature surface. I chose to use a black primer here as this will create the appearance of shadows in some recessed areas, like those around the tank tracks and in between the panels. To apply the base coat to the model, I used a method called dry brushing. If you're not already familiar with the technique, it essentially involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint and removing some of the excess onto a tissue or a piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in the bristles. Once this dry brush was prepped, I dragged it across the whole model using a series of light but broad strokes. This caused the paint to be transferred to the hard edge details and the flat surfaces, but the deeper recesses remained untouched. As I had used a black primer here, these areas remained black and so helped to create the illusion of shadows. The benefits of this technique are speed and simplicity. You can cover a large area fairly quickly, especially when compared to more conventional application methods. Plus, you create the appearance of shading and gradients of color without the need for techniques such as glazing, blending, and airbrushing. The color I chose for this step was olive drab, and this was applied to the entirety of the tank. This will begin the process of creating a winterized scheme that was employed from the 1950s onward before being slowly phased out during the 1980s. With the base color of the olive drab completed, I had a good starting off point, but before I progressed with the camouflage scheme, I decided to add a little definition to the surface details. This was done with some green brown. This lighter green color was then dry brushed over all of the hard edge details of the tank. By using a light amount of pressure, the paint built up only on the edges, which helped to build up some contrast against the darker olive drab surfaces and the near black recessed areas, which really helped those details to stand out. Now that my modder had a good olive drab starting color, I could begin the camouflage stripes. The first color that I chose to use was stone gray. This paint was a good starting point for the winter camouflage as it's a very light grayish brown is more realistic than a pure white, especially after accumulating dirt and grime. I decided to apply this via a dry brush, but this time I opted for a much narrower flat bristle brush. The smaller profile allowed me to more easily dry brush the white bands over the tank surfaces. I used some reference photos to help me out here, but the basic principle of this involved painting a series of thick, soft-edged bands that snaked across the vehicle's hull. To add a degree of variation to the camouflage color, I used a small amount of pure white and carefully dry brushed small patches of white along the stripes. The result is a more irregular and therefore more realistic looking application of dirt and weathering. With the camouflage completed, I could begin working on some of the smaller details of the vehicle. The first of these details were the metal track links. For this, I used some German camo medium brown, but instead of dry brushing it, I thinned it out with a little water and base coated the entirety of the tracks. This brown gave the tracks a dirted and dusty appearance that I would further build upon later. For the metal and rubber areas, such as the tow cables, the trim of the road wheels and the track pads, I chose to apply a base of the very dark grey of black grey. This had the advantage over using a pure black as it helps to create both a blackened steel and a worn rubber effect, and also gave me the opportunity to apply a wash over it in the next step. Which saw me using a black wash. Sometimes a wash is applied over the entire model, but this time around I didn't want to darken things down too much as the dry brushing had already achieved a lot of the shading and I didn't want to dull down the white camouflage. So I focused my application of the wash more directly, focusing on the deep recesses and around some of the details like the tracks and the road wheels. I basically used it to help add a little shading in anywhere that was maybe looking a little too flat. To build upon the earlier weathering of the white camouflage pattern, I used some sepia wash in a similarly targeted manner. I added a small amount of the wash into a recessed area, like a hatch or a panel, and then dragged this paint downwards. This resulted in what looked like water streaks, essentially where accumulated dirt has been partially washed away by rain and other water. After allowing the washes to dry, I next wanted to add some of the metallic paint oily steel to the secondary weapons and tools that were painted earlier with the black grey. I applied this paint carefully along the edges using a thin brush. This edge highlighting technique helped to create a dark metallic appearance. 
In addition to the edge height, a dry brush of oily steel was also applied over the tank tracks. If you overspill onto the rubber areas, don't worry as these can be cleaned up with some more black grey. Once I had finished the step, I made sure to thoroughly clean out my brushes and change out my paint water to avoid contamination of metal paint flakes. The final step in painting this model was to add some mud and dirt around the bottom of the tank and around the tracks. To do this, I used a small piece of torn sponge dipped into some chocolate brown. This was then dabbed around the tracks and the lower sides of the vehicle to simulate how wet mud would form on the surfaces. And here we have the completed Marta painted in a winter camouflage. Now, whilst I focus on just one specific vehicle in this video, you could easily apply the same colors and techniques to other West German vehicles too. You can find a full list of all the paints used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. And if you enjoyed the return to the small scale, then please do let me know in the comments. And with that, the final thing to say is a massive thank you to you, my supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hurt, Stuart Smith, Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Douglas Wilson, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Strand, Lyconian Primark, Merrick, Mr. Grimm, and Raphael Beiruthi. So, a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, then your help is highly appreciated. If you would like to help me out too, then you can check out my description for all of the relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Thank you.